Shall we stand and sing only believe? Father, we are grateful for this grand opportunity we have to present Jesus Christ to the people of Chicago tonight. We thank Thee for this great revival that is now just beginning, and we pray, Lord, that this message will never die in Chicago, but will grow from church to church, from place to place. Until a great host of people with one accord are gathered together and we see a repeat of the apostolic blessings poured upon the peoples of every church and every denomination. Granted, Father, may it not only go from church to church, but from person to person until an old-fashioned revival has brought Chicago to tears wherever home has thrown out the card tables and uh, put a prayer altar there and, and the places are closed up of vice and just a real old-fashioned revival. God, we're thinking of your great servant, Mr. Moody, and many who are at your altar tonight. And Father, let it happen once more, won't you, Lord, just before the coming. We think of those great men who their tears is stained these streets here and crying and begging for the people. And I pray, God, that you let us see it once more. Grant it, Father. And now bless thy humble servants everywhere, every pastor, every lay member. And help us as we go along life's journey to scatter sunshine until we see the Lord Jesus face to face. We ask these blessings in his name. Amen. Now I would ask this Christian friend. It's a little congested. And we will try not to be too long. We'll just pray. And we'll see what our Lord will say to us. And now I want to say sometimes people misunderstand these things. When we call people up here and something is spoke. They sometimes say it's a, it's a stage show or something. Oh, I, I don't mean it that way. See. I, I don't want you to think that uh, at, at that uh, that's wrong. We just trying to, as Paul stood and preached and looked in the audience, and he said to a man, I perceive that you have faith to be healed. Stand up on your feet. Jesus Christ makes you whole. Just a repeat of the gospel. And that's, that's my motive. That's what I mean in my heart. And you pray for me. And I wish you would be just as reverent as you can, especially while the prayer line's going on. There'll probably be mothers and dads and little children here. If they cannot be touched by God, they're going to die right away. And your disobedience might hinder their faith. So let's just all believe with one accord now. And just say, Lord Jesus, I believe you. And that'll make a wall of faith all the way around. And it's a little difficult to work when these people behind and people everywhere. Because each person is a spirit, an individual unit. And that spirit, of course, comes in contact with spirit. See, spirit with spirit. Now, if the angel of the Lord, I do not know anyone here that I can see Probably every one of you are strangers as far as I know. I believe I know this man taking recording. I'm not too positive. But I think I know him. And that's the only person I see in the building at this time that I know. Now, God knows every one of us. So if he will come tonight and reproduce the life of his beloved son in the church, then you love him more and more all the time. Just fall in love with him and keep him on your heart. And just don't notice what people say. Just keep in love with Christ Jesus and he will lead you into the shady green pastures. God bless you. What?
Are they all lined up, ushers? You have your audience ready. Let's stop just at that. Now they got a line. Now, now let's believe with all of our heart now. Be real reverent. And how many will pledge that, Brother Branham, I'll be praying that my Lord Jesus will help these sick people tonight. Will you do that all? Thank you kindly. That's very nice of you. God bless you. I want to thank these ushers and everybody, too. They've been so kind to everybody. And around the church here, the boys here in the tabernacle, the young man has been so nice when I come back and talk to him over the afternoon. They've been very, very nice. And I appreciate it very much. All right. If the lady is very sick, why, come here and stand right against this lady, if you will. All right. So you have something to lean on. Is what I'm... Now, how I want you to lean on something else now. On the everlasting arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe he is here? You do. Now, I believe our sister is a, a stranger to me. I don't believe I ever seen you in life. That makes you and I strangers. Now, my sister, if there was anything in the world that I could do as a man to help you, I'd be very glad to do it. But I, I can't, you see, no more than just pray. I'd just be as your husband or loved ones or whoever it is, your father, or I just someone to help you, you see, to, to help pray for you. And uh, you believe that, don't you? But do you believe that the story is told about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and he lives in his church tonight? Now, if Jesus was standing here wearing this suit that he gave me in a body form like I'm standing, now, he could not heal you, see, because he's already did that when he died at Calvary. See, he saved everybody in the world when he died at Calvary. Do you believe that? Now, the only way you can be saved is to accept what he's already done. And he, by his stripes, we were healed at Calvary, see. And you just have to accept what he's done. Is that right? Now, the ministers, many of them preach the gospel of divine healing. You accept it. It's just the same results. But in there, God has set some in the church, apostles and prophets and gifts of healing and so forth, faith. And that's to, to stimulate, in other words, the church. And that's what I'm here to do, sister, to try to help you to believe on Jesus. But now, for instance... You're standing tonight, happen to be the first patient, a woman, and me a man. That would be just like uh, the repeat of the woman at the well, a man and a woman. And Jesus talked to her a while. Did you ever study that, wonder why he talked to her? He, he perhaps, I don't say so, but just knowing how he works now and how he does, it's the first thing. He wanted to get the attention of that woman. Now, that's what he's trying to do to every sinner, speak to them in an accident or sunset or something. He's trying to get the attention of that sinner on him. If he can ever get the attention, like he did Moses with a burning bush, he turned aside. Well, that's what I'm trying to do now, is get the attention of you alone. Turn to Christ. Now, if he has risen from the dead, as he said he would do. And would show the same signs if he was standing here wearing this suit, I said. He couldn't heal you because he would tell you, I died for that purpose. But here's what he could do. He would know all about your trouble. If there's any trouble in the way, he would tell you. You know that, don't you? He could do that. But you are a believer. You, you are a believer. And... You've had, a, you've had an operation. The operation was, was in the, the inward parts, the, the intestines. And uh, it hasn't been successful. Your intestines, there, there's a drainage of coming from the intestines. And they want you to come back again. But they can't do nothing for you. They'd give you up. There was nothing they could do. And is that the truth? If that's the truth, would you raise your hand? Now, you heard the voice, but that wasn't me. That was just like the light, but it isn't the light, it's a current. See, That was him talking. And whatever he told you, it's the truth. 
Now, if that was truth, do you believe he could still tell me what was truth? Why, well, he's healed you. Calvary, when he died for you, are you willing to accept it now? Yes, sir. You are. Now, isn't he the same Jesus who would know all things? Yes, sir. Do you believe and accept your healing now from him? I do. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, the woman stands here, and you know her conditions, and we know that Satan would rob her life if he could. But thou hast said in the Scripture, in my name they shall cast out devils. And we know that it would only be a devil that would do this injury to this poor little woman. And I pray thee, Father, to have mercy upon her. And now as your servant, in obedience to your commands, I lay hands upon her for her healing. And as your servant, I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast this evil spirit from the woman that's trying to take her life. Come out of her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I adjure thee to leave her. Amen. Now, sister, just go on your road happy, thanking God, and t- write to me and tell me what happened to you. God bless you. You believe you're healed? Yes, I do too, sister. God bless you. Amen. Now, would you come near, sister? Now, our blessed Redeemer is present in the building. You believe that? With, you believe that He is present? All right. Then, if, if our Savior is here present and can heal you and make you well and can make you whole again only by as you believe Him. Isn't that right? Just as you believe him, so will he do unto you. Is that right? Do you believe he'll heal you of your disease? I do. And then, besides that, you've got someone on your heart, a loved one that you're interested in. I believe it's a boy, a son. And that son that you're trying to get to go to some sort of a school or something to become a full-time uh, gospel worker... <laughs> Uh, that's all right, mother. I just, is those things the truth? Right over there. Uh, all right. See, God, He doesn't need the car. He can be. He, you just go down, mother. Accept Jesus, and the boy has been a very odd sort of a boy. And um, it, but you just believe with all your heart. For years and years, you've longed for this. Is that right? But now, I believe that God will give you the desire of your heart, Mother. Now, Heavenly Father, be merciful to her and grant that she can go from here tonight. And may her beloved son go and fulfill the desire of Mother and the call of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Mother. Go on your way and peace of God be with you. Go lay your hand on him. God bless you. Let's say the glory. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Now, come, would you, sir? Do uh, you believe with uh, all your heart? Of course, sir, as a brother, there's nothing I could do to help you in the way of healing you. See, I, I couldn't do it. And you look like a good, strong man. But perhaps you're not. I don't know. But our Lord Jesus knows you, and he knows me. And now, if you believe that he is here in his presence this year, <clears throat> you believe that he is here? <clears throat> It's cancerous condition, and that man sitting right there has the same thing. And demons are screaming one to another, you see, for pity, mercy. They're calling, and so is the angels of God calling. The battle is here. Now, your faith will determine which way it goes. You believe that'll come off of your face, sir? Believe it, God will let you get well? You do it sitting there with the mother there? You believe it? I had screaming for mercy, both of them. There's a, a pull. 
You've had an operation for yours. I see a hospital or a door open or something. There's surgery going on. And it was in the stomach or intestine in there where they, oh yes, and it's a, they've, uh, it's formed a knot or something has grown back in that, in that place. Isn't that true? Is that the truth, sir? Now, you brethren, uh, God be merciful to you. Uh, you believe me as his servant, see. You're both right now at the verge of being healed, see. I can't determine that. I can only speak what I see, see. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Now, your faith in God will what will make you well, see. And both of you are in dying condition. Only life can come through Christ, who died in your stead. You have a wife that's in need of prayer too, don't you, brother? Yes, sir. You believe she'll be healed also of the tumors? You believe God will take it out of her? You do. Let's bow our heads just a moment. Oh God, author of life, giver of mercy, thy great being is moving in this audience tonight, standing here, and to think of the privilege that we have of standing in the presence of Almighty God. And I pray thee to be merciful to these men, my brethren. God, they're going to die. The doctors has done all they can do. Your servants, the doctors, has done all they know how to do as human beings. But, oh, Father, dear, you have purchased their healing. And I pray that their faith will not be moved. That now they will accept and believe and both will be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Satan, to you who has bound these people, you're exposed tonight. You can't hide any longer. You hid from the doctor, but you can't from God. Come out of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask that you leave. Now, my brother, you go on your road happy, rejoicing. Lay your hand on the wife, too, and she'll never have to have the operation. And you believe with all your heart, sir. You can receive, too. God bless you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Hey, everyone, are you in love with our Lord Jesus? Oh, how wonderful he is. How his cross should be before us and his crucifixion always knowing that he's there on the cross. He died for us to purchase our sins. Oh, sinner friend tonight, won't you flee the wrath to come? And will hide yourself in Calvary there and take up your membership in some good church and, and serve God till you die. Won't you do it? Lovely Jesus Christ this year who knows everything, knows all things. The disciples, when they seen Jesus doing his work as he does tonight, he said, We know now that no man needs to teach you, for by this we believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Do you believe tonight he is the Christ, the Son of God? Now be real reverent, and would you come? Now don't move, friends, because these demons that leave the people go from one to another. Any Bible student knows that. And you're subject to them. And if you're a critic, I would certainly be in prayer. Because if you only knew how many times that hundreds of people sit right in the meeting, take epilepsy, cancer, sitting there critical, see, when the evil spirit leaves a believer, it'll hunt a body somewhere. It's got to happen. So be reverent now and love the Lord with all your heart. Now you come. Do you believe with all your heart? I sure do. And you believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is sure to heal or to reveal himself. He has already healed the people. Perfect. You believe that? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's very fine. Perfect. Now, the Lord Jesus knows you and knows your life, knows all about you. Isn't that right? That's right. And he knows me. He knows all of us. Now, you have got something in your, in here, your, it's a gallbladder trouble. You have trouble eating. Your stomach won't digest your food right. And it's a gallbladder trouble. You've been to a hospital or something for that. And it's taken uh, x-rays. I see them taking those tablet things. And, and um, they have taken x-rays for that. 
And, uh, but you have been in prayer about coming to this meeting and you said, if I would lay my hands on you, that you would get healed. Is that the truth? That's in prayer. Now God was there and heard your prayer. You believe that is the truth. Is that right? And say, I see you a much younger woman one time. You had a great experience. You were healed about many years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago. And I believe you was a tuberculosis at that time. Is that right? And you were healed and made well. So are you healed now? Jesus Christ makes her whole. Oh, God. May the evil leave and may she be made well for God's glory. Amen. Now go rejoicing, sister. Praise Eat Lord. now and enjoy your food. And God bless you. Let's say thanks be to our Lord Jesus. Here. Now it's your mental attitude of approach. Jesus could do not many mighty works because of flock. Their unbelief. Are you praying all out in the audience, everywhere, believing? The man sitting right back there on the end of the row with that rupture. If you believe, brother, you can be healed. Do you believe you're healed now? Or stand up then. God bless you. I've seen the light hanging over you and I've seen your ruptured condition. God be with you. Are you a believer, sir? Yes, sir. All right. You and I are are strangers to each other. Is that true? Sir, you sitting there, it's ready for that operation on your eyes. Sitting right straight down in front of that man there, it's fixing to have an operation on his eyes. Several rolls back, way back, about the middle of the way here. It's fixing to have an operation. You want to be healed? You're ready for your operation. You accept your healing now, do you, sir? The Lord bless you. Go home and be well. brother, we being strangers, but Jesus Christ is not a stranger to us, for you are a Christian brother, and you have been to a hospital, and you had an operation for a tumor, and the tumor was in the stomach, and they've taken it out, and you've never been right since. It's just constantly getting worse and worse. 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 Is that right? That's right. And you are a Pentecostal brother. Amen. And you belong to the Polish Pentecostal church. Is that's that right? right. Go on your road. And may the Lord Jesus Christ make you God may our brother live. Satan. God bless you, brother. Have faith now. Have faith. God will grant. Will you come, lady? Are you believing with all your heart? Yes, you are. If the Holy Spirit of God would be near to Do you want to get over that female condition? You do? Just go ahead because you're healed. Jesus Christ has made you your faith has saved you. Now, while she was standing here, the confusion, just a minute, you had the same thing. So the blessing hit both of you. Do you believe it? You believe that abscess is gone from the ovary? If you believe it, go on off the platform. It'll stop bothering you. It won't bother you anymore. All right. Now, Dad, of course, anyone knows and sees that you're a crippled man. We know that. And I, if I could heal you, I would be glad to do it. See, I would be glad. But I can't do that. Uh, I am not able to do that, or no other man is able to do that. Only the man, Jesus Christ, who has already done it for you. Yes, yes sir. But do you believe me to be his servant? Yes. You do. Yes. And you believe that Jesus Christ 
while you're so close to his presence here. Yeah, yeah. You, not because that I'm standing here, yeah. but because that the people are looking this way and their faith are centered on, on something. And I'm just a minister of the gospel. Yeah. See, I, I believe it, you, you believe it with yeah. all your heart. Yeah. Now, you're not from this city, are you? No. You've come from New York. Yes. Is that right? Yes. All right. Now, do you believe now with all your heart because yes. I told you that, yes, being a stranger? If you believe that, when you get down off the platform, just put your crutch up on your shoulder, go on back to your seat and go back to New York City and rejoice. And I'll meet you there for a little after. Now, don't doubt. Go down, put your crutch on your shoulder and do as you're told. All right. Are you believing with all your heart as you can? Oh, how wonderful our Lord Jesus Always do just exactly what he says do, and you shall, you'll find out it's exactly right every time. To disobey, the man has been crippled for some time, but there he is now just as normal as any man could be at his age. He's made whole because he believed that I never healed the man. God healed the man. His faith in God that made him whole. But now you see, what if I told him to put that crutch on his shoulder and he would not have done it? He'd have went right back out there just as crippled and went back home in a worse shape than he was when he come. See, it's always do just what the inspiration says do. What the Holy Spirit is giving that prophetic utterance. If it surely knows your life and who you are, knows what you have been, it'll know what you will be. Is that right? Certainly it will. All right, have faith now. Lady, you suffer with diabetes. Would you like to be made well of that? Would you accept Jesus as your healer now? Our Heavenly Father, I lay my hands in the way of commission by Jesus Christ that you will heal this woman. May she go and be made well through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. Now, do you accept your healing? Now, of course, you feel different now. See, because the thing's gone from you. Don't never let up on it. Just keep praising God and going on. And then as you go, don't pay any attention to it. Just go on praising God. For the curse has gone from you now. But if you go to feeling symptoms, then you start disbelieving. The unclean spirit comes right back in again. Worse off than he was in the first place. Go thanking God and believing. God bless you. All right, baby. Would you like to be healed of that kidney trouble and go home and be well? Would you like it? Well, do you believe Jesus had done it for you? You accept it now? As you have believed, my sister, so shall it be to you. God bless you. All right, would you come? Would you like to get over the diabetes, female trouble and things that you're bothered with? You'd like to get over that? You accept Jesus now as your healer? With all your heart, you believe he heals you right now. God bless you, sister. Lord, I pray that your blessings be upon the woman. May she leave here and receive what she's asked for. Amen. Amen. Now, if you believe with all your heart, it's all, it has gone from you now. That's the truth. But now, if one unclean spirit's gone out of a person, it walks in dry places, gets seven other spirits, and comes back again. Now, the good man of the house has to stand there to ward off. And the good man of the house is your faith. Your faith in Jesus Christ. Well, if he'd come here and do what he's doing for you tonight, and you go disbelieve him, why, it would be sinful, would that be? All right, now you go rejoice. All right. Now, let's say thanks be to God. Do you believe, lady, with all your heart? <clears throat> we will appreciate if you don't take any pictures while Brother Branham is praying for the sick. It, it's a little too disturbing. We appreciate the, it otherwise and are happy for it, but not during this time. Please. Thank you. Excuse me. Christians, the reason brother said that, the angel of the Lord, it's a light itself. And it draws from place to place. And a flicker of a light sometimes confuses me, see, while the angel's moving here on the platform. And then it leaves me. It goes over the audience. And I have to watch. And then it, that light spreads out when I'm in that other world, as we would call it, in the vision. Then I see what's taking place. And then I'm in that place with the person. And then when I'm speaking, I'm conscious. Maybe that I'm standing in a hospital in one world and standing on this platform in another world. So you understand. It's just right now, I'm just getting so weak. I end up, you see the perspiration running off the back of my hands. It's just about to take my life standing here, see. It's, uh, uh, the prophet Daniel saw one vision. He was troubled at his head for many days. Is that right? You don't, 
a woman touched his garment and virtue went out, see. And now it wouldn't touch me, wouldn't have it. But it's your faith in God and I just stand as his representative, you see. And you're pulling and drawing and what the Father shows me, well then that I tell the people, you see. I can only do what he tells me to do. How do you do, lady? Excuse me, I... Sometimes I, it's kind of a subconscious. Could you imagine standing somewhere and be standing here and be way off somewhere else and knowing that you're looking at something and then standing in that world and know that your voice is coming back in another world before an audience of people? You don't know how loud you're talking or nothing. It's vision. It's a, if there's a scientific person, it's another dimension to the scientific world. These three mortals live in, but the other, God lives in it. Thing. And it's in a duel. There's nothing you can do about it, see. You can't help it. I want to rest just a moment, if you'll excuse me. How many in here ever dreamed a dream? I see here. I see there's at least two-thirds of the people dream dreams. That's about normally. About one-third out of an audience of this size doesn't dream dreams. There's many people that's never had a dream in their life. What is a dream? It's your subconscious. Now, say here's the normal man standing here, the first conscience, and here's his subconscious. When this becomes inactive while he's in sleep, well, this one becomes active. While he's in this one, he can dream about things he did in this conscience. Then when this one is inactive, he comes back into this conscience. And many of you people dream dreams. Remember things that you dreamed about years and years ago. Is that right? Well, you were somewhere, there was some part about you that was somewhere, or it wouldn't be uh, recorded in your memory. Is that right? Now, now God does, God does deal in dreams, but it's not too active, you see, unless there be an interpreter like Joseph or some, and the patriarchs and King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams and Daniel interpreted. And the Bible said in the last days that the old man would dream dreams again and the young man would see visions. Now, now perhaps maybe the man that doesn't dream a dream, his subconscious would be way back, like over there at the wall. He sleeps real sound. A dreamer doesn't sleep sound. But now the one with his subconscious way back, he never gets back to it. He just sleeps through. Now, but a a seer, his subconscious is not back there. Neither is it here. But it's right here. Now, he can't help that. That's election and calling of God. The person's makeup was that God intended that before the foundation of the world was ever put in order. Now, no matter how much this fellow here that dreams a dream would try to keep from dreaming a dream, he couldn't do it. And neither could, if I say you people that dreams dreams, dream me a dream. Well, you couldn't do it. No, you can't do it. Yet you do dream dreams. That's way with me. I can't do nothing until I see it. Now, right here, I do not go to sleep. But it's just like a sleep. You break over into something else and you see what's taking place. And yet you're so conscious, not asleep, but you're so conscious that you know you're standing here on the platform. Yet you're in a, like a dreamland. And you're seeing the patient that's before you, what's taking place. Well, you're just talking. Then when you come back, sometimes you don't even remember what it was. You understand? Now, that's what effect you can imagine what that would have upon a human being. See? But what is it? It's all the sovereignty and the election of God. See? It's God who does it. Now, would you come, young lady, if you will? Now, I suppose that we are strangers. I do not know you. God only knows you. I do not. But our Heavenly Father knows you. And we uh, be here about you in Chicago and me from Jeffersonville be about 300 miles apart. We've probably never seen one another, nothing in life. But God knows you, see. And do you believe that he's able to reveal to me through his spirit what's wrong with you? Do you believe that? And if it is the truth, you'll witness the truth. Of course, if it isn't the truth, then it isn't the truth. And I'll be found a false uh, apostle or false teacher. Is that right? You're not standing here for yourself. You're standing here for a mother. And that mother has, has a cancer. And she has some kind of a spells, like it's, a, it's convulsions. Is that right? And isn't, have you got somebody with you, a sister about your age? Is that right? 
And you're from New York. Rochester. Is that right? Go find your mother now, and I trust that she'll be well when you find her. God bless you, my sister, and may God be with you. How do you do? Do you believe with all your... You, you know. Well, that's very... I love to hear that. I know. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against the day. Is that right? That's right. Now, this is a perfect view again of one man standing at a well and a woman. Two different races of people. And yet he showed there that God was no respected person. And she said, well, the Jews have no dealings with the with, uh, Samaritans. But he, he knew and after talking to her a while, he found what was wrong with her. Is that right? That's right. And he'll know the same thing for you. That's right. uh, you, um, there's something about blood. I see it moving. Mm-hmm. You're bleeding. Yeah. Yes. It, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, cancer and uh, glands. Is that right? Yes, you have a high blood too. Mm-hmm. And you belong to the Methodist church, don't you? Is that right? Yes, Lord, be merciful, I pray. Spare our sister's life. And may this devil that's taken a hold of her descend her to a premature grave. May he leave her tonight in obedience to the gospel. I lay hands on her and say, leave her, Satan, in Jesus Christ's name, you who are called cancer. Amen. Go rejoicing, sister. And if you believe so, it'll be to you. How do you do, young fella? What do you think about all this? Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, raised from the dead? I sure do. You do. You believe that he is sheer now, and it's, it's his works. It's not ours. It's his, isn't it? You have a heart trouble. And that was a rheumatic fever. Yes. And wasn't you in the Navy? Yes. That's where you got it, wasn't it? As a sailor. But let's leave it here tonight at Calvary. Will you do it? My God, have mercy and bless this boy in healing, Father, I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Go rejoicing and happy. No doubt nothing and you shall have it. Come, lady. Do you believe... Would you like to get over the diabetes? Yes. Go accept your healing through Calvary. You shall have it. All right. Come believing now with all your heart. How do you do, sir? You want to go eat your supper and enjoy it? Well, just go do it. If you believe Jesus Christ, you can do it and be made well. God bless you, brother. That's your... Don't worry. You had heart trouble, too, but don't think nothing about it. You go on believing. With do you believe, lady, with... Lord Jesus, I pray that you'll heal the woman. May she go from here tonight rejoicing and happy in Jesus' name. Amen. I go, don't doubt nothing. Just rejoice and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you want her to get over the heart trouble too? You accept your healing now from Jesus Christ? God bless her who I bless in thy name. May she go in Jesus' name and be made well. Amen. God bless you, sister. See, it's not my prayer, it's your faith. It's faith that does it, although he told me to be sincere. And Christian friends, I'm as sincere as I know how to be before him. Because some of these people, it's somebody's mother here, perhaps then someone's mother now. What if that was my mother? And some man was praying for my mother. I sure want him to be sincere. I sure want him to do. And as I do to God's people, I am serving God. In so much as you have done unto the least of these, the, my little ones, you have did it unto me. Is that right? Listen, here's a lovely thing. As you serve one another, you're serving God. Okay. The love of God is in every Christian heart. And be kind to one another. Forgive one another. If you don't see the scriptures just alike, well, you believe anyhow and, and pray for the other person and just love one another. You'll find there's no greater evidence of a Christian in the world than love. Now, lady, do you believe that arthritis left you standing there? Raise up your hands. Stomp your feet up and down. It has. See, now you're going off the platform rejoicing and thanking God. And the same thing for you. 
Now just go on. God made you well while you were sitting there. Let's say thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't he wonderful? Look this away, lady, sitting there praying with a dropsy, sitting right there. You were saying a prayer then, not saying a prayer, you were praying because you're a Christian. You have heart trouble, it's called dropsy. Is that right? You believe Jesus Christ heals you now? All right. As you have believed, so be it unto you. Uh, just a moment, there's a, a vision near the lady. Or oh, it's the lady next to her suffering with nervousness. Isn't that lady? Isn't that right? You have a nervous condition. Say, aren't you a nurse? Is that right? Or if it is, raise up your hand and wave it like that. I thought you were. I seen you in your clothes. Go home now tonight rejoicing because you won't be bothered with it no more. And say, nurse, while you've got your hand up, there's a poor lady laying right next to you there. Then she's got lung trouble. Would you lay your hand over on her? Is that right, lady? Lay your hand over on one another there. So, and, and the little lady next to her there, she's a little gray-headed woman. Yes, look this way, lady. I want you. You have a hernia, don't you? A hernia, the little lady. Yes, ma'am. A little hernia. Is that right? If it is, wave your hand. Now you lay your hands over on the other lady like that. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will heal them. And may they go home, seeing your spirit move down that line and heal those people. May they be blessed with the everlasting blessings of God. In Jesus' name, I ask it. Amen. All right. Oh, how wonderful our Lord Jesus is. Do you believe with all your heart? Somebody in this section's over in this way. Go to believing with all your heart. So you may be healed. God can make everyone well. Don't you believe that? He certainly he can. When I spoke rupture a few moments ago, the lady sitting right there, yeah, you felt strange. It, it left you right then. <laughs> the lady next to you there, that arthritis also. See, that you believe that God made you well too? You accept it? God bless you. It left you just then. See, friends, you don't have to have prayer cards and be on the platform. Jesus Christ is all over the building, you see. He's all over the world. Are you believing? All right. Have faith and believe. How do you do, young man? Do you believe with all your heart? Yes. You believe the Lord Jesus is here to heal you and to make you well? Yes. And you would like to get over this condition, this stomach condition, be made well? And you have something that bothers you. Could I speak to you away from the microphone just a moment? Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Now you know no one knows that but God alone. Is that right? That's right. If that's right, hold up your hand. Now that's a demon that's tormenting you, son. And you will never get rid of it. There's not a medicine in the world could touch it because it's supernatural. Do you believe that God gave the commission to his church to cast out devils? And you believe that this church all around here will bind their prayers with me and pray for you that that demon will leave you and never bother you no more? It's a horrible thing. It'll drive you insane. You know that. You've been bothered with it all along. It's just something that's handed down to you. Nothing can take place, only God. Will you believe if I'll ask God? I can't heal you, son. I, it can leave you now. That's right. He couldn't stand before sincere prayer. No, sir. Well, he's exposed. I've never seen you in my life. But God knows, and you know that's a secret to, to people. Isn't that right? Yeah. If that's the truth, raise your hand. No one knows that. God knows that. And here he is standing here revealing things. Now, you accept it, will you? Now, I want the church to bow their heads and pray with me with this young man. Heavenly Father, to see this young man standing here bound with this demon that's bothered him since a child. But, oh, God, the author of life, send mercy to this boy. Now, I pray that you'll heal his condition, Lord. Make him well so he can eat and enjoy his meals again. And, Father, I pray that you'll take this demon away from him. Thou demon, as the church of the living God, we stand as a representative of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Come out of the boy. We adjure thee to leave him in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look here, young man. You're free now. Go thanking God and saying, praise God. God will grant and make you well. Amen. Have faith in God. Only God can do it. Isn't that right? Only God. But believe with all your heart. God will heal and make well. You don't get over that prostrate trouble, sir, sitting there? Yes, sir. You're sitting this way. You was praying a few moments ago. When I looked your way, I seen the angel of the Lord standing above you. And I seen you were ready for an operation of prostrate trouble. Isn't that right, sir? You want to accept your healing? Raise your hands up to Jesus Christ. Say, I accept my healing. Do you? God bless you. Thou has believed right. You won't need any operation. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Have faith in God. What do you think, ladies, sitting there with the diabetes sitting there? Would you like to get over it too? The ladies, yes. Would you like to get over that diabetes? Well, he's standing right near you now. Why don't you accept your healing? Will you do it? God bless you. That colored lady sitting next to you has a rupture also. Would you like to get over that lady? Yes. God bless you. Go and may the Holy Spirit heal you. It goes to another lady, a gray-headed woman sitting there, a colored gray-headed woman. She has hernia also. Sitting over there with a hay fever, sir, you want to get over it and be made well? You do? All right. Your friend sitting there was praying for you. God make you well is my prayer. Believe. Have faith in God. Is this a patient? Excuse me, sir. Uh, Do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is present to heal the sick and the afflicted? If I didn't say one word to you, yet you'd believe anyhow, would you? That's the way to believe it, my brother. You've been very sick. It's a intestinal operation of cancer. It's true. And aren't you some kind of a teacher or something like Bible teacher or expositor or something? On the side. On the side, yes, sir. And uh, say you come from the Moody Bible School. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But you don't mind. You said and prayed. If I'd lay hands on you, you'd get well. Is that right? Come here. God spare the man's life. It may take the message and be made well. God grant this a springing board into that great fundamental school. God, in Jesus' name, heal him, I pray. Amen. God be with you, brother. Go rejoice in our... And believe with... Believest thou all things that the Scripture has said? How do you do, sir? Is this the patient? You believe, sir? Oh, you're here for our good cause. Yes, sir. You, uh, you have, you're some kind of a man. I see a, a railroad running by with a tra- Your switchman or was on a railroad. Is that right? And uh, your nerves cause you to have to give your job up or something. And that calls from drinking. They just charge. Yes, sir. Alcoholic. 27 years. God be merciful to you, sir. You know what's left you. It went then. Return back to your job and God be with you. Believe us out this. You believe Jesus Christ is here to heal every sick person in the building? Let's bow our heads just a moment. Oregon, would you play just a moment? The great physician now is near. 
the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping hearts to cheer. No other name but Jesus. Oh, Lord, who sent Jesus Christ, your Son, to us to redeem us from our sins and to heal us of our sicknesses, we most humbly accept his offer to us tonight pardon of our sins and gladly do we renounce our infirmities upon his suffering there at Calvary when those great lashes was laid into his back and his poor bleeding back sticking to the cross by his stripes we are healed said the prophet I pray thee, God, to let that vision be before every eye in here. And may every sick person in this building be healed tonight. May every sinner now be ashamed. Knowing that Jesus, the resurrected Lord, has walked these streets by their sides, watched over them, guided them into the building tonight. May they become your servants, Lord. Grant it just now. And may every person that's not born again of the Spirit of God, may they be filled with the Holy Spirit this very hour. And now, Lord, to the needy and sick, setting here many of your children, thy Spirit is here to reveal and to explain and to make true the Bible in living words. Almighty God. Hear the prayer of your servant as a cry with all my heart. And I ask you to be merciful. And now, Father, if thy servants has found grace in thy sight, answer prayer at this hour. Hear me, Lord. I pray that you will grant it. And at this very crucial moment, when demons are trembling... People making their decision just now and thoughts running through their heart as they have seen you in the building tonight, moving among the people. God, I pray that you rebuke every unclean spirit, every devil, every sickness. And may the power of the living God set every person here free tonight. May there not be a feeble one among us tonight when we leave this building. And may we say as we go to our different homes like the disciples that came from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us? Grant it, Lord. And now, Father, if thy servant has found favor in your sight, may you hear my prayer now as I go forward in this challenge of faith. Lord, as Christians with their heads bowed and prayers going to you, I come in this challenging name. Satan, you who've bound these people, you're exposed tonight. Your grips are lost. You have no legal authority at all. Jesus Christ robbed you and stripped you at Calvary. And we come as the church of the living God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I adjure thee to leave every person in the building. Come out of the people. Thou demons.